Hi everybody, this is Amy from Clayground Paint Your Own Pottery Studio in Worcester, Massachusetts. This is the item I'm painting today. It is the seahorse sculpture, uh, the small little seahorse that we have in stock here. And um, I am using our new color 97 uh, for the body of the seahorse. It is this amazing tangerine that I'm absolutely hooked on. Yellow orange is my favorite color and this is um, pretty darn close to um, perfect in my opinion um, for an orange. Um, so we're using blue, red, and orange today. Um, blue and orange are complementary colors so they're gonna really be really, they're gonna be very awesome um, paired up against each other. So I'm taking a small round brush which is my brush of choice for outlining edges, just to make sure your edges are crisp um, uh, when colors come up against each other. You always wanna trace the edges first, and then you can come in with a larger round brush. Um, again, round brushes are my brush of choice for pretty much everything here in the studio. Um, so you want to fill in. Again, don't load, I've said it before, don't load up the paintbrush with too much color. You want to apply it as if you were painting nail polish or a wall. You wouldn't blob on paint when you're doing nail polish or a wall. Um, and yes, you can see the white through it, but we'll be doing three coats of paint on this, um, on this piece. So uh, the white underneath will disappear with each coat that you put on. Also, make sure you don't work the brush back and forth too much. Um, and uh, I know um, I've seen a lot of customers say um, the paint's starting to feather. That means you're brushing back and forth too much um, during your application of your coat. Again, um, the same analogy with nail polish applies. You don't brush back and forth with nail polish. You just do one sweep per coat. Well, ideally you do one sweep per coat. Um, so that's three coats of orange. Now I'm going in with a small round brush again and I'm outlining the edges this time of the belly. I've got some um, color 91. It's the red with the yellow cast to it. Um, we've got two reds that look almost exactly alike. One had a bit of a yellow cast to it, and then another one has kind of a blue cast to it. I think that the yellow one works well, is gonna work well with this little seahorse. So I'm just outlining the belly, and then I'm gonna go in with a larger round brush and just gonna sweep across his little belly segments to fill him in. Um, those of you who know me, um, I do. It's interesting that I own this studio because um, although I like to paint, although I, I love art, painting is probably my least favorite art activity to do. Um, I love to draw. Drawing is more portable. It's you get more instant gratification. Um, so my compositions. Um, my painted objects are usually very simple. Um, now I'm taking in a very fine liner brush and dotting in some red around the crest of the seahorse just for some interest. Um, again, we do not use fun riders here at the studio. Um, they ruin more projects than they actually um, they've ruined more projects than I can ever imagine um, they could do. The tops tend to blow off and um, also if you don't control your squeezing pressure you could blob on a lot of paint and um, once you blob on a blob of paint it'll run down the side of your piece if you're painting a mug or uh, it's just pretty much impossible to get it off. So um, I show people how to use liner brushes here. Once they've used them, they love them. Um, just you have a lot more control with your liner brushes. Now I'm going in with the 
blue zero five and I'm painting the crest of the seahorse. You want to work from your lightest color to your darkest color. So um, blue is the darkest color that I've done and also the most, um, the color with the most intensity. Um, so it's not a matter, it's also a matter of color intensity um, in the, in how, um, in the, depending on the order you apply your colors. So blue, this blue zero five was also um, the darkest. So I'm going in and I'm outlining. Um, I don't know if I wanted, I, I guess you could probably say you wanted sea foam in the waves, but I just liked it plain old blue. Um, it just seemed to look better to me that way. And now taking my very fine liner brush and going in and applying my, making my little S to make my little eye. I do my S across the top of the eye. And then I just do a little black dot. I anchor the black dot at the top of the S. It's almost like a comma. It's like an S-shaped comma um, on the top. And that's all I do for my eyes. Um, so you can see with the liner brush, you get so much more control than with a fun writer. It does take some practice. That's why I always tell people practice on the table. Practice painting, I don't care. The tables are washable. Practice with the liner brush to get a feel for how it behaves before you touch it to your piece. Um, you can do lines, curly cues, squiggles, spirals. It's just, um, it's just overall a better method. Also, you'll notice that I always start off very thin with my lines. I tried almost tickling the surface of my, almost tickling the surface of the piece. Instead of pressing down too hard. If you start thin, you get more of a chance to go back. It's that whole measure twice, cut once thing. And there's my little seahorse. I hope you like her, him, it. See ya.